Uh, hello and good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Los Angeles Times. We're here in El Segundo. I'm Samantha Melbourne Weaver, Audience Engagement Director here. This is Karen Kaplan, our Science and Medicine Editor. Uh, and we are here to answer some questions about coronavirus. Uh, Karen has been covering it for, I guess, months now. Yeah, a couple months at yeah. least. Um, so we've collected some questions. We have a, a link that we'll share here in the comments um, for you to send in more of your questions about coronavirus. Uh, we'll come back uh, later this week and next week and answer some of them uh, as, as we get them. So I guess let's just kick it off. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Chris LaFriends who says, very basic question, what are the actual symptoms of coronavirus? Well, uh, it's a very simple and very complicated answer. So the simple answer is the primary symptoms are a slight fever, uh, a cough, and shortness of breath. So that sounds pretty straightforward, but what makes that complicated is those are also symptoms for a whole bunch of other things that are not the coronavirus. And that's one of the uncertainties that is making it really complicated to keep track of who's sick and who's not sick. So what should someone do, especially with these kind of weird mixture of symptoms. What should someone do if they think that they're sick or have coronavirus? Uh, if you have those kinds of symptoms and you know for sure that you would be in a high risk situation like you have recently traveled to China or you've been around somebody who has recently traveled to China, which is probably not as likely now that we've had all these quarantines in place, but um, if, or if you've been around exposed to somebody who you know was on one of these cruises or had some other kind of direct exposure, um, you, for sure you would have a higher suspicion that it could be coronavirus and not just a cold or the regular flu. Um, before you go anywhere, you should call your doctor in advance and let them know what symptoms you have. You don't want to just show up in their office without them having a chance to prepare. Uh, they'll probably want to make sure that when you, if indeed you should come in, that they have a plan to bring you in when you won't be potentially exposing yourself to lots of other patients who are in their waiting room. Um, or even in an emergency room if you were to go to a hospital. So start by calling your healthcare provider or your urgent care or whatever and um, check with them before you come in. Then they might decide that you have enough of a clinical suspicion that you should come in. They might say, you know, stay at home a day or so and check back with us. Um, you know, they might not have a testing kit available. So definitely check first before you go into a place where other sick people who might already be vulnerable are. That's a really good tip. I haven't heard that before, so I'm <laughs> glad that you said that. Um, what is this virus like for most people? The, there have only been a couple. There's been like two or three U.S. deaths. I mean, you know the numbers. It's 11. Me, it's actually up to 11, 11 deaths now. Wow. Um, but the best information we have to answer that question comes from um, a report that was put out by the Chinese Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They looked at the first almost 45,000 cases of confirmed coronavirus infection in China. I think they were mostly in Wuhan where the outbreak started. And when they examined all these initial cases, 81% of people were classified as having minor symptoms. Um, so that's mainly the slight fever, cough, shortness of breath. Um, then of the remaining 19%, I believe it was 14% had serious symptoms and the other 5% were severe. It could be the other way around. It could have been, to me, Similar serious words. and severe both sound <laughs> bad, but one of them is worse than the other. Um, but only 5% were in the category that was the worst. And um, if you have a really bad case of COVID-19, which is the name of the disease that this virus causes, uh, what can happen to your body ultimately is you could go into kidney failure or you develop pneumonia first. This is a, essentially a lung infection. Um, and then that can lead to kidney failure and sepsis, which is just the infection overwhelming all the organs in your body. Um, and then ultimately of this initial group of nearly 45,000 patients, um, two and a half percent died. All of those deaths were in the, you know, the highest category, of course. A um, Couple things to keep in mind. The, these numbers are only counting the people who were tested. So there is an unknown number of people out there who could have been infected but never were tested and they're because they had either no or very slight symptoms. So uh, this 2.5% would be seen as like a ceiling, you know, like it's probably not worse than that. 
um, the more people who are in the pool of infected people and the same number of deaths, you know, then you would have a lower, you know, the percentage of the fatality rate would only go down. But the assumption is that anybody who died of this, they were very likely to catch them. They're more likely to miss people who had a mild or completely asymptomatic case of infection. Huh. So along those lines, who is most at risk of severe symptoms? So since this is a respiratory disease, people who already have some kind of lung damage or are the ones who are most susceptible. So in China, where smoking is a big deal, um, you have a lot more, um, lot more cases in people who are smokers, which in China tends to be men way more than women, so you ha had a gender disparity there. Also being older has been a, see, correlated with higher risk of fatality. Um, one of our reporters talked to uh, an infectious disease expert who had a really interesting theory for why there have been very few deaths among young people. Because usually like with the flu, and the coronavirus is not a flu, but with the flu, um, you have people who are very young or people who are very old are the most susceptible. And in this case, there's, with coronavirus, there hasn't been, um, there haven't been a lot of deaths among young people. And one of the theories that um, I personally found interesting was that partly what makes you sick is the virus doing damage to cells in your body. But another thing that makes you sick is your immune system responding hmm. to that invasion from the virus. And that's why you get a fever, for instance, or that's why you have a cough. The fever is raising your body temperature to try to kill off the virus. Uh, the cough is trying to expel the virus from your body. Um, but if your immune system is uh, overactive, it can cause too much inflammation. That's the name of this process. And the inflammation itself can cause a whole bunch of other problems that can lead to death if you're vulnerable. And the idea is that in a young person, their immune systems are not mature enough to overreact to the extent that wow. it would kill you. That's just a theory. We don't know for sure. I'm learning so but much about infectious <laughs> yeah. diseases and sickness. That's so interesting. Um, so how should people be protecting themselves? The number one thing is to wash your hands. <laughs> In fact, my hands are all cracked and dry yep. because I've been washing them all the time. I'm trying to feel good about that instead of be annoyed. Um, uh, since this is a virus, you can kill it with soap and water. You got to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Um, the World Health Organization actually has an amazing video with a 90 second regimen of how to thoroughly wash your hands, which we should be recommending. But if that's not practical for you, 20 seconds is the bare minimum. <laughs> uh, you want to make sure you're scrubbing all the surfaces and that will get rid of the virus. Um, another option is to use uh, alcohol sanitizer. Be mm -hmm. sure to have at least 60% uh, alcohol content, which I think pretty much they all are over that threshold, but the CDC is being sure to note the 60%. Um, don't touch your face. Um, there's, when you stop and think about it, you'll be shocked how often you are touching your face touch without it right realizing it. Right Sometimes they say that's one of the best things about wearing a mask is it will make you really pay attention to how often you would be touching your face. Um, and the virus can get into your body, not just through eating without washing your hands, but touching your nose, touching your mouth, touching your eyes. So don't do that if you can help it. Um, speaking of masks, wearing a mask is not a great way to protect yourself from coronavirus. Um, they recommend that if you have it, or if you have some other disease, you know, put it, wearing a mask will prevent you from spreading your germs to others. Which is nice. Which is nice. But it doesn't really do that much to protect incoming germs from hitting you in the course of daily life. Mm. And the people who really need masks in healthcare settings and, you know, we, we don't want to take masks away from them. No, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about disinfecting surfaces? Clorox, yes. Lysol, good idea? Yes, definitely a good idea. Um, I'm not endorsing any particular brand, but you definitely <laughs> want to keep your um, area clean. Clean it more often than you might normally. Um, the, th that's one of the specific pieces of advice from the CDC. We uh, suspect that this virus not only um, you know, travels through the air, but that it can survive on surfaces. Uh, we don't know how long, but it does seem like it can um, survive on surfaces. So anytime you're touching a doorknob or a handrail or a table, anything that other people are touching, 
Uh, You'll want to <laughs> make sure to wash your hands pencil and keep I'm it clean. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, what should people be stockpiling, if anything? I understand that really the expectation is less that you'll get sick, but more that you'll be quarantined or you might choose to self-quarantine. Mm -hmm. In those instances, what should people be planning for? I think the number one thing that I've seen make an impression on me that you should have on hand is medication, prescription medication. And it's not so much because you will be unable to go to the pharmacy and refill your prescription if you're at home on a quarantine. Um, it's that there's lots of um, ingredients and medicines that come from China and with all the business disruptions, uh, some of those ingredients might not get, there could be shortages of certain prescription medicines. So having extra supply on hand is uh, some, a good recommendation I've seen that I thought made sense. Um, but in terms of, you know, hoarding toilet paper or masks or even water, I mean, the public water system is still working. You can still order delivery of food if you need to. We'll have electricity. Um, <laughs> right. It's, it's not like an earthquake situation. But where you should you, have an earthquake kit. You should have an earthquake kit. If you live in LA. <laughs> and you shouldn't need to dig into your earthquake kit right. to use your camp food or <laughs> right. your, you know, your freeze-dried food and your, <laughs> and your water supply. Issue. Right. Yeah. The infrastructure is still working. It's just that if you are asked to quarantine and stay home, that would be a 14-day period. So, you know, you can't. If you had, could have enough food on hand to last you 14 days, that would be get to be a pretty bad diet towards the end with nothing fresh. But, a lot of chef by already. Um, I don't think you, it's necessary. Yeah. yeah, it's not necessary to cut yourself off from the entire world for two weeks. That's good. That's a relief. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last question that we have is, is a really great one, and it speaks to a lot of people's worries. Mm -hmm. um, a reader by the name of... Um, R Rashmi Pujar asks, how concerned should we be? Uh, you should be concerned, but you should be concerned about the right thing. So being concerned and taking it seriously doesn't mean being concerned that this virus is going to kill you. Uh, you should be concerned that if the situation could arise where you're going to be asked to stay home for, from work for two weeks because they're might have been somebody in the office and they want to have everybody self-quarantine so you should be prepared for that you should take seriously if your school child school district tells you that they are closing the school for a period of time and your kids are going to be at home and so you might have to work at home for that reason um, there could be other public health measures like if they say don't go to a basketball game don't go to church even hmm. if public events are canceled um, don't try to go anyway if they if, if there's a proclamation that you shouldn't do these things, you should take that seriously. Um, even though we have cases uh, in many parts of the country right now, and you know, not to mention the rest of the world, uh, just today the Director General of the World Health Organization was saying it's not too late for us to contain this. Um, you know, we have to take it very seriously and really like do everything we can to, for instance, in the U.S., try to keep track of all the people who are known to have been exposed and make sure that they're not walking around in the world infecting other people. Uh, but in China, they've seen good progress in many of the provinces where the number of new infections per day has really been going down, and some of them have stopped getting new infections. Great. So they're taking that as a sign that it is possible, <laughs> but it's not easy. So it's you should take, that's the part you should take seriously, is to do what you can to prevent the spread. Great. Well, thank you so much. This is Karen Kaplan, our science and medicine editor at the LA Times. I'm Samantha. Um, leave your comments um, and questions at the link that we're going to provide. It should be at the bottom of the screen as you watch this. I don't know why I say future tense. But um, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll answer more questions later. See you next time.